What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to carry on with antivirus evasion with shellcodes. So basically in the first part of the series we talked about the definition of shellcode, we talked about what's portable executable, we talked about the difference between staged and non-staged or stageless payloads, and also we took an example on how to evade antivirus detection or protection using encoding and encryption of course manually. And today we're going to talk about packers and maybe binders as a way to evade antivirus detection. So let's first open a new page here and talk about packers. So here you have the packers. Packers are a piece of software. Okay. There are different kinds of packers you can see on the market. We have UPX packer. We have Confuser, which we will be using in this video. And we have also Empress. These are all packers programs you can use to pack your program. And we have Timidia. Timida. So these are all softwares you can find on the internet and some of them are free to download. So now let's step back and define what is a packer. What does backer do to a payload? So basically guys, you go through the process of generating shellcode first, you generate shellcode, uh, maybe you write it yourself manually, okay, or maybe you use MSF Venom as an example. There are many other ways to, to generate payload, and once your payload is generated, or once the shellcode is ready, what do we do here? We have many options. We can either encode it encoding and encrypting as we have seen in the last video but it has to be manual so here you have to do it manually okay and you have to combine more than one method for example it's not enough to use base 64 alone it's not also enough to use XOR alone so we may have to combine both methods to fully encode and encrypt your shellcode now today we're going to show how after we have generated the shellcode we're going to show how to use packers okay so back again packers are pieces of software that take a program as an input and transform it so that its structure looks different but of course the functionality remains the same so what packers do first we provide the input. The input is, guess what? It is the shellcode after we have compiled it. We have compiled it. So basically, let's say shellcode.exe. That's the input. Or actually, we should uh, use different arrow. So here is the input. Okay, the shellcode.exe. Now, don't forget that after you have generated the shellcode and the shellcode is ready, you have to include it in your code okay as we have uh, demonstrated in the last video don't use the shellcode immediately here it's not usable the shellcode actually is in hex format so you have to take the hex value and place it in the specified variable or designated variable in your code after you compile your code say the code is shell.exe or executable file now you have you are ready to pack the shell so we give the input as shell and then what's the output so basically the packers what will do it will give you compressed version compressed version and maybe sometimes encrypted okay less size and the last thing which is most important protected against reverse engineering so that the reverse engineers will have hard time deobfuscating your shell so all of that translate to shell v2 that's how packers work if you are interested in understanding more details about how packers work you can refer back to the room but that's in general how they work they perform a series of compression encryption to give you a less size payload that can be or that can work against reverse engineering and hopefully bypass 
antivirus detection. Now, there is one more thing to explain about Packers, which is, so now we're saying, guys, that Packers, what they do, okay, they pack the shell code, okay? Now, you might be asking a question here. Now, how if how the malware gets unpacked on the victim PC now it's packed right now how can now the uh, shellcode unpacks itself so basically packers include something called the code stop code stop is part of the overall code of your shellcode that's added by the packers we added to the shellcode so code stop is responsible for unpacking it unpacks the malware okay in memory in memory not in disk that's why it's able to evade antivirus detection now there are some antiviruses AVs that are able to do in memory scan these antivirus will be able to scan your application even when it is running in memory so if the code stop okay that is used to unpack the shell code okay is part or exists if it exists in the antivirus database or uh, sign database of signatures unfortunately you will your malware will be detected immediately so it depends first on the avs capabilities if it's able to do in scan uh, memory scan or the code stop is actually found in the signature database so that's uh, good to know it's, it's good to know about this remember this um, and try to read more features read more details about the packers you are willing or you are planning to use because sometimes packers will give you details about the code stop and then you will be able to see if the code stop might be included in the one of the antiviruses database of signatures okay now let's take an example the challenge today we will solve the challenge of the room okay so let me show you guys what is the challenge so here's the challenge so in this challenge we are required to create an executable file that's able to evade windows defender which is hosted on the machine as a web challenge so basically we have to answer these questions let's build now um, a shell code that's able to evade antiviruses so we have the attacker machine and we have the machine itself hello okay let's do that so the first thing we go to the attacker machine and we need to generate a shell code here that's the first step Okay, so to donate a shellcode, guys, we're going to use MSF Venom. sudo MSF Venom P Windows x64 shell verse TCP. Notice that this is a st stageless payload. Okay, L host is the IP address of the attacker machine. Port 4545. You can choose any port you want. Dash F. We're gonna choose C sharp because the code that we will use the shell code in is written in C sharp. So you can use C sharp, you can use C. It depends on your original code, which will include the value of the shell code. Now we go here, open the tools, C sharp. I'm going to take a copy of that to the desktop. Name it V2. This is the stageless payloads. This is the payload that will host your shell code. Let's take a look at the code. It's written in C sharp. That's why we have generated the shell code in C, C sharp. Now, as you can see, here we have the public domain function. As you can see, this is the 
shell code variable that's supposed to host the shell code we have generated. We're going to put the value here. The value typically is in hex format. This concept is applied to all uh, shell codes. So basically, no matter the uh, evasion method that you're planning to use, encryption, encoding, packing, okay, you have to use the shell code that you have generated here in the payload. Normally, this is an example. Okay, so we have this. Let's now host or copy the value. Right click, copy, and paste it here. Okay, we have to remove this. Okay, so now we have copied the shortcode here. We're going to save this. And the last thing we're going, not the last thing, we're going to need to compile this. So open the command prompt. Make this bigger so, guys, you don't complain about the text, the small text. Make this big. Fine. CD desktop. CSC. We compile a CSR file. So right now the shell code is ready but it is not yet able to evade antivirus right it's only a payload that contains a shell code so we have to apply this time or we have to pack it so we go to tools confuser it's a packer open confuser All right, this is the graphical user interface. The base directory is a directory or the base directory that contains or hosts your project. So basically, you choose desktop. It's also the directory that contains the payload. Select folder, and then it is the output directory that will contain the um, encrypted payload. So where is our payload? This is our payload. We drag and drop. And we can see that this is information about the payload. Now we go to settings, we choose the payload, executable file, and we add it here using this plus sign. And we will see the rules, we see true. We click on the pencil to edit, and we select the preset to be maximum. Done. And then we go to protect, and I click on protect. So right now, as you can see guys the payload here has gone or has undergone a series of packing encryption compression so that it's ready to evade antivirus detection okay that's the easiest methods packing right if you don't want to deal with manually encrypting and encoding a payload so the output payload is here now we're going to test this by going to the server or the web server that hosts the antivirus or the web AV and of course we're going to open a listener here and see that LVB for RF5 okay we navigate to the page choose files desktop now if you choose the original payload see here upload it's not gonna bypass right as you can see threat is found and it has been caught let's now choose the packed version which is under the confused the project directory and we upload so giving back let's check out the connection if you receive something and we receive the connection so the payload has successfully bypassed the antivirus Let's answer the questions that are required in this task and we wrap up this challenge. So we go to challenge. Which antivirus software is running on the VM? It's typically Windows Defender and it was clear when we saw the warning. What's the name of the user account to which you have access? Okay. So who am I? It is AV victim. 
Now the last thing we have to find the flag. So cd back cd users av victim. Desktop dir type flag text and here you got the flag guys. So this is the answer for this question and this is the flag. Hopefully guys you like this room and if you want to check out my latest notes file that I have created which is AV evasion I will be adding the rest of the techniques to this file you can find this file if you in the channel subscription tier you have to subscribe to tier 2 uh, to be able to uh, get this file this file can be accessed online and can be downloaded unlike many of the other notes file so thank you guys for watching and i will definitely see you in the next video